Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here. Last week on this channel, we looked at the history of Street Fighter 3 and why in the 90s the game never became popular with the mass market. The popularity of that video has had me thinking all week about other Street Fighter games, particularly those of which that were also released in the late 90s. Today, we are going to be looking at the history of perhaps one of the coolest concepts to come out of the fighting genre from the time period. A game in which two worlds collided in and brought two universes together into one single extraordinary game. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the controversial history of X-Men vs Street Fighter and why it outraged people. Yeah! Once again, the road in this content starts at Street Fighter 2, the game that is credited for rejuvenating the arcade market, in a period where people spent the majority of their gaming time at home. With Street Fighter 2's success, Capcom decided that they wanted to milk the game for all it was worth, which would soon lead to the countless revisions of the game, with each iteration receiving slightly more polish than the next. Despite relying on this formula for at least a few years, Capcom knew that in order to captivate the Street Fighter audience, sooner or later the fans would need something new, which would eventually lead to the arcade release of Street Fighter Alpha in Japan in December of 1995. For reasons, this was simply not enough for Capcom, as over the next 12 months following the release of the game, the arcades would bloody see the release of another four fighting games featuring the name Street Fighter in the title. 1996 was a particularly busy year for the franchise, as it would see the debut of Street Fighter Alpha 2, Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter EX, and the subject of today's video, X-Men vs Street Fighter. That is a bloody lot of Street Fighter for one single year, eh? Which makes it no surprise at all that the casual audience severely struggled to keep up and stay interested in the regular Street Fighter brand past this point. Anyway, out of the games that were released this year, the most interesting out of that bunch for me personally in the 90s was X-Men vs Street Fighter. Now before we talk about this title itself in more depth, let us talk about the second franchise that was part of this game, X-Men, and where it stood historically in 1996. Obviously, X-Men originally debuted in 1963 in the form of a comic book series written by Stan Lee. By the time we got to the 90s, the franchise had entered into other entertainment mediums. On February 12th, 1992, the day of my sixth birthday, an X-Men beat-em-up was released into the arcade by Konami. Apparently, the character designs in this game would be based on the 1989 X-Men cartoon pilot episode known as Pride of the X-Men, and this simple repetitive game is remembered extremely fondly today. Later that year, X-Men the Animated Series would debut on the Fox Kids Network and would become both critically acclaimed and a huge commercial success. As a result, this would spawn another four seasons of the show, as well as leading to a um, comic book spin-off of the comic book spin-off, as well as other merchandise such as action figures and of course video games. Amongst all of this, Capcom would manage to strike up a licensing deal with Marvel and as a result would release a fighting game in 1994 titled X-Men Children of the Atom. The game was originally released in the arcades on the Capcom CP System 2 hardware before being released on a number of home platforms. The fighting game features controls and conventions Capcom previously established within the Street Fighter 2 games and the original Darkstalkers. This game is particularly important in today's story as part of a licensing agreement struck by Capcom allowed them to place Akuma as a secret character in the game, interestingly making this the first game in which characters from X-Men and Street Fighter would face off against each other. The following year of 1995, it would see the next Capcom Marvel game, simply titled Marvel Super Heroes which would be a similar fighting game, only this time featuring a whole range of characters from across the Marvel Universe, as opposed to just X-Men, like in Children of the Atom. What makes this game particularly interesting today is that the story of the game is based on the Infinity Gauntlet storyline, making this game more culturally relevant than on release. As a result, the game includes the feature of collecting Infinity Gems from your opponents, as well as a final encounter against Thanos. 
So yeah, with all this info in mind, and Capcom releasing a series of both Marvel and Street Fighter games year in year out, it would make sense that by 1996 they could cross the two universes together. The game's opening scene touts itself as the wildest crossover you have never dreamt, which I guess would be completely applicable if you never saw a Kuma and Children of the Atom two years prior. Anyway, within this game on Capcom's CP System 2 hardware, the player select screen gives you a choice of 16 playable characters, 8 of which come from the world of X-Men and the others from Street Fighter. I want to take a quick moment to talk about the selection of Street Fighter characters we are presented with. Seven are straight from Street Fighter 2, which makes a lot of sense considering how popular the game was, but for some reason, the final Street Fighter on the menu select is Charlie from Street Fighter Alpha for some reason, a character who is according to in-game lore, a friend and mentor to Guile, which leads me to the question as to why they did not just include Guile in the first place, considering no one from the mainstream is going to have a bloody clue who Charlie is anyway. Well, to answer this question, the answer is quite simple. All of the Street Fighter sprites in the game have simply been used straight from Street Fighter Alpha 2. And unfortunately, Guile was not included in Alpha 2. So I guess Capcom never fancied the work of creating him from scratch for this game. In fact, it was not only the Street Fighter character sprites that were ripped straight from another game, most of the X-Men character sprites were ported straight out of Children of the Atom, so therefore the majority of animations in the game were simply recycled from other games. The only completely freshly drawn playable characters for this title are Rogue, Saberwolf and Gambit, since they never featured in any Capcom games previously, so at least that is something I suppose. Once again, in regards to the characters, Akuma once again also makes an appearance as a secret character within the game, which is a fun little trope that Capcom seemed to be really stretching over a lot of different titles from the period. On top of everyone else we have talked about, the game features a final boss battle against Apocalypse, which is a nice change of pace from many Capcom fighters of the time, bearing in mind that he is not a regular fighter and takes up the majority of the screen like a final boss encounter in a Mega Man game or something. Anyway, like Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Alpha and Capcom's previous Marvel games, this one is obviously yet another 2D fighting game, and as a result consists of the player controlling characters in one-on-one -on -one combat. Who would have thought? This game varies though from all of its predecessors in that it features dual character selection and tag team matches players. The game further differs from many fighters in that the best of three rounds format is completely ditched and instead the fighting in this entry consists of just single rounds. Going back to that lovely player select screen I mentioned earlier, the player must actually select two of these players prior to a playthrough and as a result the starting character can tag in and out of the fight with their off screen character at will. In regards to this mechanic, both controllable characters sport their own independent life gauges, and the Dorman off-screen character will even regenerate HP when not in battle. If one of your characters is knocked out, then the other jumps straight into play, letting the match continue until a team is defeated. All in all, making this Teddy Long's all-time favourite fighting game. Holla holla holla! Other game mechanics are ported over from the previous Capcom Marvel games, including the Super Jump, which lets characters jump higher than normal, and the Aerial Rave, which lets you do a combo whilst up in the air. In regards to some of the big moves in this game, many are quite frankly ridiculous, and to be honest, very fitting of the X-Men. When it comes to the Street Fighters on the other hand, certain manoeuvres look a bit out of place. For example, Ryu can all of a sudden perform a massive Kamehameha Beam, as opposed to just a simple Hadouken. This special attack is imaginatively named the Super Hadouken. Very creative, eh? As mentioned earlier in the video, this game would hit the arcades in Japan in late 1996, and would shortly go into circulation around the world shortly after. According to Electronic Gaming Monthly, the game was only mildly popular when first released on US soil, but after a few months began to pick up some steam after people began to realise this cool game existed. From personal experience back home in the UK, I too have memories of stumbling across this game on an arcade unit somewhere and being blown away that I could play Street Fighter and X-Men in the same damn game. In terms of how journalists responded to this game at the time, 
opinions were mixed with the main consensus being that the game was a decent fighter but just one of many to exist at the time. Next Generation for example praised the new tag team mechanic along with the inflated projectile attacks and lengthy combos. However, they took note of how much Capcom were milking the fighting game formula. So concluded, X-Men vs Street Fighter is a fun game, but it's just a bit of an overdose of the kind of game of which we've already played way too much. On the whole, from what I can tell from my personal observations, the arcade version of this game seems to be quite fondly remembered. For me and many, I guess the main drawing factor was simply the novelty to have Street Fighter and X-Men characters in the same bloody game. This was one of the coolest things ever to see as a child who enjoyed both franchises, especially when you take into account that this was in an era where corporate crossovers seemed to happen a lot more infrequently. As we know, Super Smash Bros. did not even exist at this point in time yet. Touching back on this game's gameplay, from what I could learn each character in the game had at least one infinite combo, which apparently was not intentional and was only left in the game due to insufficient beta testing. As a result, Capcom would quietly tinker with the game, resulting in two updated versions of the game colloquially known as version 2 and version 3. The main change in version 2 of the game is that it removed Ryu and Akuma's abilities to recover from their hop kicks in midair. Version 2 also changed Ryu's hurricane super move to move the player up as opposed to down like in the original version. Finally, Sabretooth and Dao Sim's mechanics were also tinkered with. Version 3 of the game would see a bigger overhaul which would result in Capcom removing all of the infinite combos in which they knew of. In last week's video, I mentioned that it took three years to get Street Fighter 3 over to a home console due to the game being too technologically developed to be able to run on any game console of the period. The characters featured too many animation frames and as a result would only run on the Capcom CP System 3 hardware. Thankfully for Capcom, X-Men vs Street Fighter was a little less taxing ran off CP System 2 hardware and featured many assets that were simply recycled from Children of the Atom and Street Fighter Alpha 2, two games that had already been wonderfully ported to the Sega Saturn. As a result, at a November 6, 1996 press conference, Capcom announced that the home version of X-Men vs Street Fighter would be an exclusive to the Sega Saturn. This would lead to the press and fans of the franchise accusing Capcom of favouritising Sega which was bolstered by the fact that Darkstalker's Revenge was also a Saturn exclusive and that Street Fighter Alpha 2 did not run as well on the PlayStation as it did on the Sega Saturn. In reality though, Street Fighter Alpha 2 running better on the Saturn and making the decision to make X-Men vs Street Fighter a Saturn home exclusive had nothing to do with favouritism and simply related to the Sega Saturn's 2D capabilities. The Saturn was a superior system to the PlayStation in that regard, as it offered 50% more video memory, which in turn meant that the system could produce bigger, better sprites and offer superior backgrounds. The Saturn's two video processors could handle 2D beautifully, and that is before we even get into the introduction of Saturn RAM cartridges. So, all in all, the decision to make the game a Saturn exclusive seemed like a very sensible choice. Sadly though, before the game was released, popularity of the Sega Saturn in the West continued to diminish, in favour of the Sony PlayStation's superior marketing, cheaper price point and heavy emphasis on Polygon Gaming. Taking this into account, along with the pressure from the Western Capcom fanbase, the decision to make X-Men vs Street Fighter a Sega Saturn exclusive was soon completely rescinded. Electronic Gaming Monthly reported that Capcom stated that instead of making the game a Sega exclusive, the game would have PlayStation and Saturn versions of X-Men vs Street Fighter that would now be released simultaneously and would both be arcade perfect. 14 months after the game's arcade release, X-Men vs Street Fighter would arrive on the Saturn in November of 1997 exclusively in Japan, with the PlayStation version of the game being nowhere to be seen. The game would be released to rave reviews and see a critical response that was even stronger than with the original arcade release. 
This conversion of the game would be heavily praised for its fast-paced gameplay, great animation, sound quality and technical performance in comparison to its arcade counterpart. GameSpot were in love with the game and stated that there is no better looking 2D fighter on any console system. Game Informer added to the praise of the port for running and looking identical to its arcade counterpart and declaring it one of the best arcade conversions ever seen to date. Next Generation 2 with regards to this version stated that if nothing else, X-Men vs Street Fighter proves the old adage, more is better. The game run pretty much arcade perfect on Saturn hardware, which was made possible due to the system's 2D capabilities, paired with the adage of the Capcom 4MB RAM cartridge that came with the game. The Capcom cartridge was a system expansion cart that preceded the 1MB RAM cartridge that had been released by SNK at an earlier date for the system. This extra memory would assist the game's ability to run properly and prevent problems such as slowdown from happening. When you take this expansion card into account, it becomes even more clear as to why at one point Capcom wanted to release the game exclusively for the Saturn. Speaking of the Saturn version, sadly it would remain exclusive to Japan due to Sega's continuous reduction of support for the system in North America and Europe due to a lack of hardware and software sales. This however did not stop western game stores such as Electronic Boutique from importing the game from Japan and selling it to its consumers regardless. The Sega Saturn remains a popular system with importers right up until this day and it's games like X-Men vs Street Fighter that encourage this trend in behaviour. So now we have talked about the Saturn version of the game, we need to move on to talking about the Sony PlayStation version. And this is where things begin to get really juicy. The PlayStation version would not be ready for a dual launch with the Saturn version as planned, which instantly should have had your alarm bells ringing. The game would eventually see a release on the PlayStation in Japan in February of 1998, four months after the Saturn version and would not get to America until June and Europe and Australia till the winter. Anyway, releasing games that way was common protocol for the time, but it was the lack of dual console launches that appear a little more disturbing in this tale, particularly when you take into account Capcom initially never wanted to make a PlayStation version at all, and in many ways were pressured into the situation. As expected with a PlayStation port of the game, the memory limitations would require the title to be scaled down and altered in terms of both gameplay and graphics for the system. This would include Capcom needing to remove several character animation frames from the game to get the game to run on the PlayStation hardware. Whilst all of this was key in getting the game to run on the device, the most notable and shocking omission from this version of the game was the removal of the tag team combat, a staple of the game and a mechanic that was one of the biggest features that made the game stand out from the pack. In this watered down version of the game, the second character is only used during certain attacks, such as variable combinations for example, and the ability to switch between characters at will is completely gone. To compensate this tag change, one round battles are changed to the regular 2 out of 3 falls encounters found in the majority of other generic fighting games from the period. Interestingly, a sort of tag match can still be experienced in the game, however only with the use of a cheat code. The reason why I say only a sort of tag match is because to make this possible, both you and your opponent have to play as the same two characters, due to the PlayStation's lack of ability to keep four different character animations in its working memory simultaneously. The gimped PlayStation version of X-Men vs Street Fighter would result in some absolutely hilarious reviews at the time, with many journalists completely chastising this version of the game. Next Generation for example, who we have touched on several times in this video stated, if you've never seen a Capcom fighting game before, this might be fun for a few minutes but there is not one single positive thing to be said for the trade-offs that Capcom made to get this game to the PlayStation. Ouch. Game Revolution adds to this conversion's criticism by stating the game is a poor conversion of its arcade counterpart. The graphics aren't going to impress anyone either. If you're looking for a game that is a better arcade translation, check out Tekken 3. 
or wait for Street Fighter vs the Care Bears due out later this year. My favourite of these angry reviews came from GameSpot, which is hilarious to read throughout. The opening paragraph to their review features a level of salt that is so intense it had me chuckling upon digesting every sentence. The opening paragraph reads, When a system is incapable of doing justice to a game, one would think a company would be smart enough to not release the game on that system. But for reasons that are probably based entirely around making money, Capcom has released a completely butchered version of its arcade fighter, X-Men vs Street Fighter, on the PlayStation. Amongst this scathing review, they also state that the graphics look very washed out and there is a completely unacceptable amount of slowdown. Kenshri Yuken Super Combo had most of the frames chopped out and it still slows the game down to a crawl. The slowdown and missing frames are so bad and so noticeable that they have a detrimental effect on the already bad gameplay. The ruthless review closes with at some point in the development cycle, someone should have stepped in, seen that the PlayStation simply couldn't do justice to the original game and pulled the plug. I like the Street Fighter series as much as the next guy, but this is taking it way too far. Now, um, going back to me and my personal opinion on this whole matter, I believe as gimped as this game is compared to its Saturn and arcade counterparts, it really is not anywhere near as bad as some of these reviewers make out. This is a game I personally own, and when I was younger I never noticed a difference between this title and the arcade version due to the amount of time that would have elapsed between playthroughs of both of these games. So basically, unless you were lucky enough to have played the Sega Saturn version, or been fortunate enough to have played the arcade version of this game in the wild a lot, then you're not really going to be aware of all the changes necessarily anyway. So, for a member of the casual audience, which I would infer make up the majority of the viewers today, and the people who would have wanted to play this game on the PlayStation, the game really does not look any worse than other 2D fighters that can be found amongst the PlayStation's library. In all of this anger that seemed to be directed towards Capcom in these reviews, you could argue that the reviewers should have been angry with the PlayStation user base instead who chose to back a system that performed poorer at handling 2D games than that of the other system on the market. Obviously, you would sometimes hope that game reviewers are the most hardcore of hardcore gamers, which upon reading a lot of the X-Men vs Street Fighter Capcom reviews very much seems to be the case. However, with this wealth of experience playing all the different versions of the same game, you are going to build up a very different perspective of the title to those who simply started out by picking up a PlayStation version of the game. From Capcom's perspective, their hands were clearly a bit tired in this situation, as the PlayStation essentially was the only system worth making games for in the West during the game's release window. They entered this whole situation very reluctantly and were simply answering consumer demand the very best that they possibly could with the hardware they had at their disposal. All in all, it is very clear that if you want to experience X-Men vs Street Fighter at its best, the arcade or the Sega Saturn are the ways to go. However, the PlayStation version is not the total garbage it was made out to be upon the game's release. To summarise, the X-Men vs Street Fighter release story is an interesting one full of controversy, criticism and even critical acclaim. The game has a legacy as polarising as any that is both astonishing and hilarious in equal measures to go back and explore. Anyway ladies and gentlemen, that was the controversial history of X-Men vs Street Fighter and why it outraged people. Let me know what you thought of today's video and share your memories of this game in the comment section down below. I release multiple videos on this channel on gaming history every single week and I would highly appreciate a like and subscription if you had enjoyment from what you saw today. Lastly, the time and effort I currently put into these videos is only possible due to my small group of channel patrons who financially support my work allowing me to invest large amounts of time and effort into these silly projects. 
So a huge thank you and a massive shout out to Carl Johnson, Shizu Kobayashi, JD Robbins, Greg Hooper, Sebasta Great, Since Spaces, Andrew Pazanski, Edward O'Reilly, Quang DX, Sponge Matt B, Michael Baker, Hans Christian, Computer Man, Antonio Rodriguez, and all of my other patrons. You make all of this possible. Yeah! Cheerio.